Good morning and welcome back to Black Bear Forge. It's Sunday and of course that means it's time for Hook of the Week, but we have a little bit of mail to look at. First, somebody sent me a fruitcake. It was anonymous so I can't give credit to whoever sent this. And probably they sent this as a joke because, you know, fruitcakes have a bad reputation. But you know what? I'm the guy that actually likes fruitcake at least most fruitcakes. I've had the one that gave fruitcake a bad name, and it was pretty bad, but most of it's not bad. And this is plenty good fruitcake, so whoever sent this without putting a return address or a note in with it, thanks for the fruitcake. But we have another box. It says, please read note. Okay. Got some rags for packing material, that's always handy. And a Christmas card with cash in it. Wow, thank you very much. This is from Rhonda and James. I appreciate that quite a bit. But let's take a look at the note. Looks like it's a couple of pages, so I uh, may not read the whole thing here. First off, thank you for sharing your knowledge with us through social media. Here's a hook I posted on the Facebook group about a year ago. Number one is the final product. Number two is how it is cut, and I use the porta band to do that. So this is a hook. Maybe we'll take a look at that for today's hook of the week. Uh, it's got some instructions, and we'll go through those if we're going to make one like this. Uh, and here's the, the question here. The biggest problem I have is where the top cut is and the step Sometimes it develops into a cold shut. So we'll take a look at what he's talking about there. And let's see, that's number two. It says number one is the finished hook, so let's start there. Oh, that's pretty cool. I like that. So that's a drive hook made out of a railroad spike with a place to hang your hat and your coat. That's a pretty neat hook, James. I really like that idea. I think I remember seeing that on the Facebook group. So here is where he's having a problem with a cold shut, and he'd like some input on how to fix that, and I can see why there's a problem with that. And I think we can deal with that pretty simply. And that means I think number three must be the layout. Let's see. So this is showing the layout. And I think I'm going to go ahead and leave this one as is so we can compare all of this in the end and I'll get another spike out and uh, go ahead and lay it out to match that. And then I will talk about why this is creating a cold shut right there. It's amazing how hard it is to remember which bucket you've got your railroad spikes in when they're all full of snow. But I found us a railroad spike we can work with today and we'll use the one from James as a sample to lay that out. But I think we'll go over to the whiteboard and take a look at what's going on and what the layout looks like so I can explain a little bit better why I think a cold shut is forming. And then we'll go forge a sample piece and see if it forms a cold shut. So his layout is to cut right through here and then back into here. This piece bends up and becomes the spike. This part then draws out and become, becomes the hook here. Something like that. Um, but it's this corner right here that's causing the problem. And why is that corner causing a problem? Now if we just take a look at any old bar with a sharp corner, when you start forging this out to create this hook, what happens is this you're drawing out the surface faster than you're drawing out down in here. This is only moving a little bit, this is moving a lot. So this starts to push forward here as you draw it out and that forms a cold shut right in there. And the way to get rid of that would be instead of a vertical cut there to either make a round fuller, a butcher like this, or I think what I'll do is I'll just cut it at an angle and make that kind of curve to get in here. It'll be a little bit harder to cut. So let's go take a look at forging this in just a piece of scrap and see what it ends up like. And I'll cut one like this at the same time and then we'll go into forging the hook and see if that solves the problem. 
So as we start forging this, it's going to draw out more on the surface. And depending on how hard you hit, the lighter your blows are, the worse that gets. And I don't know if you can see this or not, but this is starting to push down into here. This is starting to push over there, and that's where that cold shut is forming. So this is definitely going to result in a cold shut. It's also the reason you scar forge welds, because they create the same situation and leave cold shuts at the edge of the forge weld. But that's really quite dramatic there, and you can see, see that happening. Let me see if I can get a good close-up of it. So hopefully you can see what's happening there in that image. And that shows why those sharp corners will almost always create problems. Sharp corners are a bad thing in blacksmithing unless that's really what you're going for. And then you got to be careful because they create cold shuts. So my first attempt at this is going to be just to cut this like this so there's no sharp corner. And that is the tightest radius I could cut on the porta band. Depending on how you're cutting this, you might be able to end up with something a little bit tighter. But the tighter it is, the more likely you are to have a cold shut. And the more gentle this is, the less likely. So I think this is going to work out just fine. First thing I want to do is go ahead and bend this so we can draw it out at the edge of the anvil going this direction. So that short piece is straight off of the spike in the long run. So I'm going to try not to bend it if I don't have to. James says that he does bend that because it thinks it's a little bit easier, but I think if we can avoid it, I'll be a little happier with it. There's kind of a stress point on the inside of this where that saw cut ends, and it's not really a big deal because this isn't a high stress application at that point. It's just something to be aware of. If there was a little curve in there, that might be better. I could probably get in there with a real small fuller and clean that up a little bit. I don't think I would go through this effort to make one or two of these if I didn't have the little fuller already. But that'll just make that transition a little bit smoother. I can use it to push this out a little bit this direction. Might be able to get in there and do a little bit of filing as well. And I think that just makes that look a little bit better in my mind. I think this is really a unique hook idea. It's really a way to jazz up railroad spike hooks. So I really kind of like the way that came out there now. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this out. Careful not to hit the spike head. That part of the hook is essentially completed. over the horn, be a little bit faster. I'm keeping my hand turned this way so that I can't accidentally hit my knuckle on that spike or the head. All of that would be bad. Right in here next to this is kind of a problem because the spike head is in the way. I 
we can get the part that'll be the spike for the hook closer and that does allow you to get in there a little bit better I think what I'm going to do is put that up against this bridge tool and I can get right into the corner and even out the degree of taper there. I think you really want this to be parallel for most of it or tapering to the end. You don't want a thin spot up close to that transition point. So I think this is just darn near done on the drawing out part. Just a matter of bringing it all into a parallel bar. Or as parallel as you want it. And I'm also going to just lightly knock the corners off here. Now I want to see if I can create a nice clean shoulder for the spike that drives into the wall here. I'm going to use the guillotine tool with butchering dies. Almost cut too far there, be careful. We're just going to draw this out. Biggest thing I can say about this design is it's awkward to hold on to. But I think it's going to be worth it. Now you could put this back in the guillotine tool with a square die to clean that up right at this shoulder. That might be a, a reasonable option. If you leave it a little thick, you can also file that shoulder a little bit and get it to clean up some. Perhaps I'm uh, worrying about it more than I need to. It is going to be driven into a wall somewhere. Yeah, I think we'll call that good. I'm starting to split a little bit on the end there. So. Quit messing with that. Now I think this should be 90 degrees in here. And if it's not quite 90, you probably want to do something to fix it. It may not be critical, but I'm going to take it to the vise and see what I can do. So I'm just going to put that in the vise. Got to push it off to the side so it hangs down past the screw. I'm not going to clamp it up real tight. I'm going to drive this part down to square that up. Now I'm going to clamp it a little bit. 
and work on the fact that nothing is actually in line here. And I think we're ready to make a hook out of this. I'm just going to start a nice little roll there. You can do whatever you want to finish the end of this, flare it out or a little curly cue or whatever, but I think today that's where I'm going to go. Okay, that's way too big a hook, I think. <laughs> that's called getting a little bit carried away. But I think it'll work. There's still enough room to get stuff in there, but... thing I'm going to do is just put it in here and make sure that all of this is not twisted because it really is twisted. That's better. Some of these little twists and turns really show in the finished product. Well, James, I hope that helps, and I hope that explains where I think that cold shut was coming from and the way I think I would go to avoid it. Now, there are other places you end up with cold shuts in a hook like this. Right here at this transition point where I butchered in, I actually ended up with a little cold shut. So I ended up filing that out. It leaves a little bit of a divot, but that half round divot is stronger than that little crack would have been that the cold shut would have left. The other place you might get a cold shut is on this inside corner if you make it too sharp. Now on James' original hook, it's curved, so there's no risk of a cold shut through here. So that eliminates that if you curve it, but I wanted to go with this flat so this drove up a little bit tighter to the wall. Just a matter of aesthetics and whatever you want to do. The other thing James did on his hook is he added a twist, and it looks like he's adding that before he does all this forging, and I didn't think of it then. And I didn't want to go back and try and do it after we were done because I was afraid I'd screw something up. But if you want a twist, go ahead. Also remember that it looks like he's only got a half a twist in here. So it's only 180 degrees. So depending on which way you want your original spike head to face, you need to think about that before you put that twist in. But I appreciate you sending the hook and the card and the gift. And I really like the hook idea. I think this is really a cool take on a railroad spike hook, one I haven't seen before, other than the one you posted last year on the Facebook group. There's a Black Bear Forge YouTube group on Facebook, and that's a great place to post pictures of the things you're making that are somehow related to the video content, or just other blacksmithing content that you have questions about. Lots of people there answer questions. I get to see most of the stuff. Don't always have time to comment it, but I do look at it almost every day. Now, I can't always promise that I'd be able to help you out with a project if you send me samples like this, but I'll do my best to do that. If you do want to send something, there is an address down there in the video description for my post office box. And you're welcome to send stuff, and I will try to get to it on the video. Sometimes I need a video topic. And having an idea from a viewer sometimes is a great way to do a video. But again, I can't promise that I'll show everything as a video, and I don't always have time to get back to people. I try to do my best, but I probably get 100 emails and comments and questions a day between all of the different social media platforms, and sometimes it just gets forgotten about. So sorry about that. If you've asked a question, sent something, or had a comment that you're hoping I would reply to, sometimes the day just gets away from me, and by the time I get back to it, some of those are a week, two weeks old. So my apologies, it's nothing personal. You know what? Christmas is just a couple of days away. I'm going to keep the hook that James made for me. I'm going to put this on the wall somewhere here in the shop, use it to hang something on. But the one that we made today, I think we'll give away to somebody out there on YouTube. So if you're interested in the hook, just leave a comment, any comment, and I will pick a random comment on Christmas Eve, which will be, what's today, Sunday? That'll be Tuesday, so you got a couple of days. Sometime on Christmas Eve, I'll pick this, and I'll try to get it in the mail the day after Christmas as a little bit of a late Christmas gift to one of you viewers. 
But anyways, I do hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends. But then by all means, try to make time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.